Okay, welcome back here. Uh, this is video four for today, but uh, we're moving into a new, new section of work here. This is vectors now. If you remember in year 11 specialist, you would have done vectors in two dimensions. Well, the big difference here in year 12 is three dimensions, and it does get a lot trickier. This stuff, not so much, but it does get a lot trickier, so stay up to date with what's going on, uh, and make sure the basics make sense for you. Otherwise, when we start looking at planes within three-dimensional space, it gets really, really tricky. And if you don't see it, you're going to struggle with the numbers. The numbers work themselves out. You've got to understand and see what's going on. So let's talk about vectors in three dimensions. Now, we've already got our x and our y axis. They're the ones that are flat on the board. Okay, They exist on the board. But my z axis is not really here. I draw it like that. But really, it's here. Really, it's coming out of the board if I want to go positive and into the board if I want to go negative. Okay? So this line here is really that one coming out, and this line here is really on the other side of the board in the next classroom. Okay? But this is the best way that we can kind of draw it to show it on a two-dimensional space. It would be easier for me to go, here's x, here's y, and here's z. That's the easier way, but I can't kind of plot things as I'm working around here. It's too hard. So see that. Look at a couple of videos online where they, they plot this out in three-dimensional space and then rotate the view. I'll find a couple and link them down below in the, in the description. But if you can see that, that'll make it a bit easier. I think most people are probably okay with seeing this one as coming in and out of the board. That aside... Everything else kind of follows fairly similar way. So here we've got vector A and vector B. I'm using the square brackets or the, or the uh, squared parentheses, square pointy brackets. I don't know what they're called, those ones. So this would be I, J, and K. Okay? Or I can write it like this. There's also a third way I can write it, which I'm going to use when I do this over here. But let's work with these two ways. Be, be aware you can get them in any particular way, and you've got to work with them. So if I'm going to work out 2a, that's really just two lots of that. So the 2 is a scalar multiple. So that means it doesn't change the direction of this. It just changes the magnitude. So my answer there is just going to be 8, 4, 2, because I'm just doubling everything. I'm just changing the magnitude of it, not the direction of it. This one, however, I'm adding two vectors. So see this on here, that I'm going from the origin, some distance x, some distance y, some distance z, to a point. And then I'm applying the second one by going x, y, z. So I'm adding all the x values, all the i component, adding all the j component, adding all the k component. So here, it's really the 2i plus the 4i, so that's going to be 6i. The 3i plus the 2, 3j plus the 2j is going to get me 5j. And then the 2k and the 1k is going to get me 3k. So that is the resultant of a plus b. Again, very similar to two-dimensional vectors. You just wouldn't have had that one there. So I'm sure you're probably picking this up pretty quick. Let's do a dot b. Now remember, a dot b is the dot product. Now, the dot product, remember, gives us a scalar answer. Okay? We will this year, I'll do it in a later video, we do cross product, which the cross product is a vector product of two vectors. Now, that's really important when we're looking for uh, the, the plane that contains two particular planes. Ah, we'll get to that later. Lots of fun stuff up that way. A dot B. Now this is where a third notation is going to be really handy. So I'm going to actually write it as 4, 2, 1, dot, 2, 3, 2. That's the easier way to write both dot product and cross product. We're only doing dot product, but cross product, this is going to be handy as well. Because now I just go 4 times 2 is going to be 8, 2 times 3 is 6, and 1 times 2 is 2, there we go, 16. There's my answer. Now remember, it's a scalar product, 
So that's why it's just a number. There's no I, J, K going on. There's just a number. Very, very quick video here. Vectors in three, 3D. A bit of remembering about how we work with this stuff. But really the first exercise you'll work through is pretty basic stuff. There'll be a few things like angle of stuff. I'll do a few of them later on. But this will get you started just to remember what we were doing last year. And hopefully it's all come flooding back. Catch you later, guys. Enjoy.